What's going on, everybody? It's me, Ryan Monson, the host of the Classic Buffalo with Podcast, the podcast that shares everyday people's stories surrounding mental health, including you, listener. And we're here for another episode, book 69. We are chugging along, and today we are interviewing uh, Lexi Markovich, uh, another person I met at a networking party quite a while back, um, an aspiring and current model. Um, but uh, if to, for the best experience, in my own opinion, I would pause this episode if you haven't listened to episode 61, or book 61 as I call them. Um, listen to that episode with Brandon. Um, I do reference Brandon a few times throughout this. Um, he and Lexi are dating. Um, and uh, th- they've been in a long-term relationship. They're two solid people. And it kind of gives some context to uh, the relationship slash just would kind of help you with some references. But uh, you can still listen to uh, this episode. Maybe you go to listen to uh, book 61 later at another time. But uh, just my own opinion. If for a full comprehensive listening experience, I would recommend going and listening to book 61 first. But uh, this is still a solid episode talking about uh, her appearance on the show Empire, talking about growing up in a rough childhood, growing up a little bit rough and tumble and she's pushing through it and uh she's trying to become a full-time model and she's doing what it takes and so i think she's got a few uh tidbits and tricks and cool things just uh, talking about good vibes only in today's episode so without further ado let's get to today's episode with lexi markovich here we go Joining me this wonderful Saturday morning is Lexi Markovich. Did I say your last name right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Yay. I don't know. Names are so hard sometimes with people. And you're like, is it this? And you're like, oh. Yeah. Especially when it's like a foreign last name and people are like, uh, I really yeah. don't know how to say this. What's the what's your like background? Um, I'm Russian. Oh, no way. Do you know Russian? I don't. It's like the hardest language to learn. <laughs> Dang. It really is. I'm so pumped to have you on because you're kind of the other half of, uh, you're, you're dating Brandon, our former guest. Um, yes. And uh, <laughs> uh, you're doing a lot of great things in the city and, and just in general. So it's a big whammy, big whammy today. I'm, I'm pumped to have you. Thank you so much. Well, let's get into our, like, our first five. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Which one is better and why? So I have only had Popeye's one time. Oh, boy. And it was just the regular chicken sandwich, and it hit so hard. Like, it was so so good. But (laughs) since I haven't had anything else, I just have to go with Chick-fil-A. And I also worked there in high school. At Chick-fil-A? Yeah, I did. Do you have any crazy stories? I worked there, too, in high school. I remember one time I was working on dining room. It was, like, a full night. It was Friday night. We had, like, a kid's night or whatever first thing that happened was I had someone yell at me because we didn't have enough high chairs and I was like (laughs) am I just supposed to like go make one for you like I don't know what I'm supposed to do like I was the only one on dining room so I was so stressed out already Uh, yeah yeah I had to clean up so many tables and then a kid throws up on the ground (laughs) and I'm like (laughs) I'm like first of all I cannot deal with throw up I absolutely can't Mm. because I will so I was like I'm not doing this I'm not cleaning this up. And then a kid spills a drink right next to it. And I went to the back and I started bawling my eyes out and then I quit. That was my breaking point. Uh, yeah. I probably worked there for about a year. Okay. Yeah. That was about how long I lasted. I mean, free food though, every day I was, I was happy, you know? Yeah. I had, there was a customer that their kid just took a shit in the, uh, the wait, you worked at Chick-fil-A too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, and the, the, because like the mom was like going around to every single table. Hey, I just want to inform you uh, that my child took a dump in the playroom. Just not let you have kids. If you have any kids, please don't put them in there. Like just a, a customer was oh going gosh. around and I was working dining room. Like this is, this is the worst. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number two, what's one of your favorite memories growing up? I have a lot of bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to share. Um, well, when I was like five years old, uh, my family and I, since my dad's a financial planner, uh, yeah. he would get like trips through work and we would just go to like Florida and Arizona and stuff like that. Oh, 
and know. we one year went to Arizona for a trip and my brother pushed me full on a cactus oh my god what into a cactus your brother's and a what is he doing <laughs> yeah we were so little and I don't think he knew like the damage it would do <laughs> But I spent a whole entire day in the hospital getting, um, like, cactus thorns, kind of, like, yeah, all this pricklies. stuff. On. Yeah, pricklies <laughs> out of my hands by tweezers, like, uh, just one by one, getting them pulled out of my hand. I'm glad I really don't remember it that well because I was so small, <laughs> but, yeah, that's a pretty crazy memory. <laughs> Number three, do you believe in any of the following? Aliens? Ghosts? 9-11 was an inside job. Epstein killed himself. So I am a huge conspiracy theorist. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I believe in every single one of those things. Mm. I've done extensive research on all of that, too. So I would say I'm pretty knowledgeable. Like, I watch a lot of true crime. So anything true crime, I know everything about any story, any thing that's ever happened. I've probably watched a documentary on it, probably watched a video on it probably have done my own research but I have my own ghost stories as well so I definitely believe in ghosts oh you have ghost stories oh that's cool. absolutely so number four would you rather see the history of any object you touch or talk to animals I would talk to animals definitely that's like I feel like everybody wants to do that yeah because like if you have your own dog and stuff you want to talk to them you want to know what's going on because you never do What's so weird is I know, like, cats, they meow to talk to humans. Some of them can, like, low-key say words. Yeah. Like, actual words. I need the... Wait, what? Number five, motto. Do you have one? Or what a piece of advice, maybe, do you live by? There's plenty of mottos, but I think one would be good vibes only. <laughs> okay. Why? I am just a vibey-ass person. I feel like I attract good people and I give out good vibes and that's pretty much my life, you know? Yeah, how would you describe vibes? I've always been curious what actually you think it is. Well, you can have good vibes or bad vibes. Vibes are just like the energy that people give off. You can definitely tell from someone like the way that they're talking to you or the way that they come up to you just what kind of vibe they have so mm -hmm. um definitely like just frequencies and energies and all of that stuff well that's what i've just been curious like is that do you think that's something you can change i don't know yeah i i, I think you can change your your energy there you go you can change your energy Num if you're smart enough to <laughs> <laughs> all right well you finished the first five congrats why don't we get into your story so like day one where are you at um, you've emerged into the world. I have no idea what hospital I was born in. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I was born in like Brownsburg. I'm pretty okay. sure. I have two brothers and I have two sisters. And we're of all ages. Some of them are closer than others. Uh, my older sister, she is 23. Okay. And my older brother is 22. And then I am 20, about to be 21 soon. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. And then my younger brother is 17, and then my younger sister is 8. Whoa. Do you have, like, you're closest with somebody? I would say my little sister, honestly. The 8-year-old? She is my best friend. Wow. I probably see her, I mean, like, four times a week. <laughs> and I don't even live with her, so. But yeah. I, make it, I make it a very, like, she's important to me, so. Mm. The other closest sibling would definitely be my younger brother because he's closest to my age. So, yeah. And he's the coolest little boy. Parent wise, you know, were they strict, very loving? You know, what was life like growing up? I mean, you mentioned that you traveled a little bit with like Florida, Arizona and stuff like that. Like, did you guys, was that a part of growing up, was it traveling a lot? Or we used to go to Florida quite a bit just like for vacations every year. So, yeah. I mean, we did, we did do that as a family, but honestly, my family is very um, toxic, I guess you could say. Um, my parents got divorced at, when, I think, when I was six, I believe. And then they both remarried 
my dad's been married like four times now, so he's been kind of uh, all over the place. But right. yeah, my family's never been like stable. But as of right now, I do have a pretty good relationship by my choice um, with both of my parents, mm. just because I have chosen to yeah. forgive them for everything that they've done, which, I mean, my, my life is literally so crazy how, right. like, how my upbringing was, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay with both of them now. It's always kind of up and down with them because they both struggle with their own stuff. Yeah. What, how did you deal with a divorce at six or you just kind of, when did you actually understand what that was? I feel like just because I was so young, it's been so normal and I didn't really have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Like some people would if their parents got divorced when they were older and able to understand it. But my grandma, she's helped me through absolutely everything. So um, she took us in after that for a little bit so that my parents could figure out what they were doing. She taught me how to, <laughs> I mean, be okay with it. Yeah, shout out to her. She's the best. I mean, I was going to ask you, like, has it affected, like, the way that you – were raised, do you think how much that affects the relationships that you have, whether romantically or platonically, do you think? Absolutely. It definitely, I I wouldn't like change it for anything because my life would be, I mean, completely different now. It would not be the same in any single way if my parents stayed together because they weren't meant to be together. So if they did stay together, it just would have made everything 10 times worse. But things did not get better after that. It only did get worse. But for now, like where I'm at and all my siblings and stuff, they're yeah. much better off. So I'm happy that everything did happen. It definitely made me into the person I am today because I did see a lot of things and hear a lot of things. And uh, they both uh, struggled quite a bit with their own things after that happened. So um, for them, at least my, my dad came out on the other side of it my mom did not so it still affects her to this day but she she tries her hardest (laughs) yeah I mean sometimes that's all you can do but what about like just kind of growing up what did you do like my whole family is very sports oriented so we all played like every single sport you could imagine I played soccer I did I was on travel swim team I did cheerleading gymnastics softball basketball whoa I mean everything yeah as I was younger, my parents, like, let me do everything to figure out what I wanted to do in, like, middle school and high school, and I chose softball. <laughs> cool. I did I did softball for, um, I mean, up until my junior year in high school, and then I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore. That was pretty much my whole life was softball, and also when I was younger, I was super into singing, just for fun, though. Like, I would sing when I was super little all the time, and my parents would joke about me being famous and used to just wear a bunch of dressy stuff and do my makeup and hair when I was little. So I, Mm -hmm. I definitely like, it wasn't a surprise to my family when I was like, Oh, I want to be a model. Right. Yeah. Did you ever like, I don't, they don't have model. They do. Oh, they do. I mean, that's not a pageant though, is it? It is called a competition, but it really is just, you go there. If you're a model singer or dancer, and it's actually in Chicago. It's called Launch, and it's like a program where you go in, and there's a bunch of agencies that are there. Okay. And they just pretty much watch you all weekend while you're doing workshops and performing and stuff like that up on stage. And at the end, you get, like, callbacks, and you get to go talk to all the people that were interested in you. And, mm-hmm. yeah, so I did that before I got signed in Chicago. Whoa. What was that like, that whole experience? It was so much fun. Um, actually I went twice because I got a full ride scholarship to come back. So it was like completely paid for. I didn't have to pay for anything. It's pretty expensive. For school? No, it's just for like that, um, competition, I guess you could say. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So I went one year and then they were like, we want you to come back since you didn't get signed with anybody the first time. We want to see you next year so that we could see how much you've improved. I went back and then I signed with my agency that I'm with now, which is 10 Management. So how old are you when you got signed? I was newly 18 years old because I signed right after I graduated high school. 
um, I was really young as a senior, <laughs> I was 17. So right. when I turned 18, I signed with my mother agent, which is uh, just like the first agency you sign with that's in Indianapolis and it's L models. So I signed with them when I was 18 and then I signed with 10 management who I'm with as well. I had signed with them, I think about August of last year. Like what was your strategy at 18? So I did go to college for six weeks oh, okay. and I hated it. Uh, my yeah. parents made me do that because mm. they were like, we would like for you to go to college. And I didn't really try very hard in high school. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to try a community college for a little bit, see okay. how I like it. And yeah, six weeks in, I was like, I actually want to die. So I'm not doing this <laughs> anymore. I took a huge leap of faith leaving college and saying, you know, what, F it, I'm going to go be a model because that's what I want to do. Yeah. My parents were definitely like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to make money? what is your plan? And I was like, I don't even care. That's just, that's my only option. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Where's the mindset where like in your mind, it's worth taking a practical loss in order to pursue your dream where the conventional wisdom would say, well, just get a degree. It's the safest thing you can do or do this. But you're like, if it means that I can't, if that I'm going to be four years behind my modeling or two years behind, but like I want to do this and I get to spend the majority of my time. Where is your mindset? Like, did you have that? Like, it's my dream. Like I can't, I'm picking my dream. Were you like in that mind space? It was more so of like, I knew I wouldn't do well in school because I mean, even high school I struggled in and it was, just, I, I absolutely hate school. Yep. Nothing in school I enjoyed except for sports. And I was just like, you know what, I'm not even going to do it. And then I, I just, I wanted to be a model. I, my mind was set on that. I was like, I'm going to go do this. I believe in myself so much to the point where like, if I want to go do something, I know I can get it done and I know I can go do it. So I was just like, you know what, this is all me. I'm going. <laughs> and I did. I did that. You drop out. Did you take a side job? And then like, how did that all work out? I've been working in retail for, I mean, my first job was a retail job. And then I worked at Chick-fil-A, ended up moving. I got a new job. And then I kind of did that while I was starting out modeling because I knew I probably wouldn't like take off in that way mm -hmm. until I signed in a different like state which Chicago has way more model, like oh, yeah. they need models there. Indiana needs none. I mean, I hardly ever book jobs here unless it's like very small, like boutiques or whatever, like right. no pay here whatsoever. So I kind of knew that I needed to go somewhere else. Where do you want to be? Like if you could pick anywhere in the States. Uh, definitely LA, hmm. which I, I did visit and I met with a lot of agencies, but it kind of didn't work out as I planned because they don't require you to live there, but they would rather you live there. So mm -hmm. all of the agencies that were interested in me, they were like, we really would love for you to live here so that we could push you a little bit more and make sure that you could be here yep. when we need you. Um, so it's kind of like, I have to put that on hold for a little bit until I'm a hundred percent like sure either that I can travel there any day like if tomorrow they were like hey we need you to come in on monday i'd be like okay i'm there like it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem why are you passionate about modeling i love the industry and it's such a difficult job and i knew that going in there that i was ready for the challenge i'm also five seven which doesn't seem like it would be short but i'm actually considered like a petite model really uh, yeah so 5'8 and 5'9 is like the cutoff point for like runway. So I don't even make it there. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, so I struggle a lot with my height in the modeling industry just because it is a little bit shorter than what most clients want. I've talked about this, I mean, everywhere I possibly can, how stupid that is. And I still feel so strongly about height not mattering like at all because the average person the average woman in America is probably like five five or five six. So <laughs> so you're telling me that five seven isn't like a little bit taller than average and I can't be a runway model? Like I, I don't get that. But yeah. in some ways the modeling industry is definitely the same as it always has been in the sense of like they're very 
adamant on like we want our models tall I have to learn to go around that and find a way to still be a model with mm -hmm. those standards so in modeling how prevalent is body image issues I mean you are in the industry that is all about body image and all about comparing yourself to other women and you're constantly just in a competition with other people because you're trying to get a job over each other I can say for myself that it's taken me like a year or so to get over every single one of those hurdles but I am at a point where I don't even look at any other models and I'm like, I wish I could look like them. I wish I could be them. They're so much more uh, taller, I guess. Like they're taller than me, right. they're prettier than me, whatever. I don't do that anymore because I realized how much that was like taking everything that I worked for and just backtracking me completely because I would sit and be so upset about something and it would just take my mind off completely of like, excelling in the career that I want to be excelling in and I would no longer be doing that because I was just so upset about someone getting a job over me because I wasn't prettier than them and it was just like I really need to just let that go I can't change what I look like I can't change my height I can't change any of that so I just have to be okay with who I am as a person mm -hmm. and then if I try hard enough if I show them what I can do people will love me and that's pretty much what I've been working with right now <laughs> What advice would you give to somebody who um, is either dealing with body image issues or wants to get into modeling? You have to take everything with just like a grain of salt, honestly. Like if you go into a casting or something and people are like, yeah, we're not interested in you, like you're too thick or you're too thin or whatever. Like if that's what you want to look like, you just have to be like, I don't care and you're going to walk into the next casting and you're going to be like, Hey, this is me. Do you guys like me? And they'll be like, yes or no. You know? So, I mean, it's really difficult to say that you have to just not care about anything <laughs> like right. going into it, but that is absolutely what has to happen. If you want to be a model, you cannot care if someone tells you they want you to change your hair or your size or whatever. You just have to be like, this is what you're going to get. If you don't like it, then I'm going to move on to the next kind of thing. You know, I, I know that it's easier said than done, but I just, from being in the industry for a while, I've learned that that's the only way that you're going to get where you want to go is if you don't care about what people say, if you don't care about what people think and you yeah. just are you like unconditionally, then you're going to get where you want to go. And that's, it's pretty much like that with every single career field, you know? definitely in this one you just have to say f the haters uh what do you like want to do do you i mean it sounds like you kind of want to end up in la which uh brandon probably would be a good fit out there too but absolutely i have no limit to what i want to do so everything that i could possibly do i'm just gonna go for it any type of modeling i do, i pretty much do everything i do sports i do e-com i do runway i do editorial I do everything yeah. I do not limit myself to one thing because that's when you start like grow your circle smaller and grow your abilities smaller so you just have to be able to do everything and mm -hmm. so I'm also a singer I oh, wow. have I've been on TV one time I was on the TV show Empire I no didn't way. you were on Empire <laughs> are you kidding yeah. me you gotta yeah. leave with that that's awesome well I didn't I didn't get any lines but I was okay. like a featured I don't know what I featured like background or whatever. So like yeah. they hire actual models to be with the like stars of the show yeah. like next to them so that you could just see you two kind of thing. So I was on there yeah. twice. What I mean, was that, that was like? fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it was the most stressful job I've ever had. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I had to like the first time I filmed, I stood on heels and I mean, I did not sit down for like 14 uh -huh. hours. I stood on heels. My feet were bleeding. Oh. Because, like, if, if you're filming one scene, it can take that long. So I can't even imagine what the actual actors of the show go through. But, like, also, when you're, like, a background, you don't really get the same luxuries as they do. So I'm sure they're fine. But for me, like, I mean, it was rough. It was fun because I got to meet, like, a ton of cool people, and, like, I met all of the actors of the show. 
I, I mean, yeah, I want to do absolutely everything. I want to be an actress. I want to be a singer. I want to be a model. I want to write a book. I want to get my own clothing line. I want to, I want to do absolutely everything. Is there anything you're working on, like, right now? I know, like, in the coronavirus jazz, it's kind of easier to be reading books and building your side hustles. I mean, like, what? I know you're kind of working a little bit in side jobs, but, uh, like, what are you kind of doing in this time? So what's really cool is right now, like, even though my agencies are shut down at the moment, um, there's still people that are booking for, like, future jobs yeah. and also online jobs. So, like, things that you can submit, like, pictures in for, like, for commercials and stuff so you could still get paid. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool because, I mean, pretty much all of my income from that is down to zero unless I get one of those. But I've really just been utilizing social media as much as possible right now because that is the most important thing mm. in the whole entire world right now. How can so, somebody grow I, on social media? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out. It's kind yeah. of hard how they make it now uh, with, like, algorithm and all of that jazz, you know. Keep posting until you're tired of posting, and even when you're tired, you got to keep on posting. <laughs> yeah. But TikTok right now is actually a great way to build your social media because it's so easy to go viral on there that once you get people to, like, see your video, then they'll be like, oh, what's her Instagram? And then they'll go to your Instagram and follow you. TikTok is a great way to do that right now. I personally think that's one of the best things models and actresses and actors and comedians need to be on those like doing sketches doing like monologues do like that that stuff's like money right now how did you meet brandon uh i was working with a photographer here um his name's connor halloran we shot together and he was like you would love my girlfriend so i met his girlfriend and they were like you know what we're gonna invite you to like a little get together with our friends i met all of their friends except for brandon brandon was the only one that did not come and so they were like well, we have more friends that we want you to meet. So like, can you go to this next one? And then I finally met Brandon and I was like, love at first sight. I want to marry this really? kid. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, wow. I, I've never experienced that before. He's my first like actual boyfriend, uh -huh. which is crazy. So yeah, we started hanging out and he was giving me the silent treatment and I was just like <laughs> not having that at all. So he finally just let me in a little bit and Ever since then, we've been together. It's been great. How long have you guys been dating? It'll be two and a half years this month. What's, like, the key to maintaining a relationship past the year mark, past two years? There's so much. Like, there's not just one thing. Like, there are so many things that you have to have in a relationship from both people to stay in a healthy one. And I think it's just communicating, if I could give one. If you're mad at someone, go tell them you're mad at them. If you want something to be done, go tell them you want something to be done. Mm -hmm. Of course, be respectful about it. But if something's bugging you, like, you can't let that bug you for the rest of the day. You can't go to bed mad at each other. You can't go to bed irritated. Just, yeah. And it, definitely, like, understanding between yeah. both of the people. Yeah, don't go to bed angry. I don't know. That's a saying. And you know what? I For two and a half years, I've never been to bed angry. You guys are awesome. I It's so funny because we, we talked at that event, and, like, I was pumped about that. And then, like, Brandon kind of swooped in and seemed like a cool dude. But after talking with him, oh, my gosh, the guy's so cool. Like, yeah, he's the, the coolest. Posit the positivity, the, he's funny. He's, you know, I'm, I'm glad we got to have him on the podcast and get to know him. So I'll, I'll want to have to hang out with you guys before you guys go out to L.A. Yes. <laughs> when this is all over. So have you, like, dealt with mental health either specifically with you or, like, people you know? Like, what's been your interaction with that? I have struggled with mental health my whole entire life. <laughs> it, it pretty much started when I was in, I would say, middle school, which is kind of sad to think about. But uh, my dad's second wife, she was incredibly abusive to me, like, mentally. She kind of like, took everything that I was ever, like, proud of myself for or, like, loved about myself just to, like, me hating it. Like, she would always, like, cut my hair off because I had really nice curly hair, and she would 
like dye it like really weird like orange color so it wasn't like a pretty brown anymore she wouldn't let me look in mirrors wow and she would pick out my outfits every single day and just like make me look so bad that was really rough like as a seventh grader or sixth grader like you wouldn't think that people would want to kill themselves but like it's it's a real thing how did you get through it I don't know. <laughs> you just, yeah. I just had to. And once, like, I mean, I dealt with that for a long time, unfortunately. Mm. And I don't blame my dad for it or anything, but he wasn't really there while all that was happening. So I just kind of didn't tell him very much. I mean, just like she did the craziest things for no reason, just because she had two daughters. I mean, we did not look similar at all. I'm not saying they were ugly or anything, but, like, we just looked very different. And uh, she, I think, wanted me to feel like I was, like, really ugly so that her daughters could feel better or something like that. I don't know. I don't really know. I wish I could ask her because I would love to know. (laughs) Yeah. That was kind of the first wave, I guess, of me hating myself just because someone else put me, like, in that place to hate myself, you know? Mm -hmm. But once she was out of the picture, um, I kind of like got back to my roots again and I got to be myself again and feel good about myself. But once high school hit, that's a different question. Um, Yeah. I moved from a school with probably like 200 people in each class to Avon High School, which my graduating class had almost a thousand. That was really rough for me because I went from going to a little school for all up until my freshman year in high school and then I moved so yeah I I definitely got bullied quite a bit Mm. and I like I even got a restraining order against someone for threatening to kill me in high school oh my god it was really rough (laughs) um Mm. yeah she never hurt me I never got hurt nobody ever beat me up or anything but still still just like uh, to be scared of something happening to you when you're in high school mm-hmm. as a freshman, just like why, you know, I struggled quite a bit with just, uh, just girls bullying me all the time and mm-hmm. guys spreading rumors about me. But I mean, now looking back, I'm like, okay, they were just jealous of me. I know that now. Mm, yeah. But just the fact that people had to make others time in high school is so awful for them is just I yeah. would never understand that <laughs> trauma is just you pass it on I feel like that's you know something's going on and then you want to transfer it to somebody else it's too much yeah like in high school I was still very like I wouldn't say popular because I didn't actually hang out with the popular people mm-hmm. but everybody knew who I was Right. And I chose to be friends with other people because they were just so awful. <laughs> and so, I mean, I still got to be very social in high school. I loved talking to people. I still do now. Like, my favorite thing ever is going to, like, music festivals and meeting hundreds and thousands of yeah. people, at, like, all the time. Right. So I still, like, in high school was very, like, outgoing. So it didn't affect me that way. But when I would go home at night, I would be like, oh, my gosh, like, I want to die. I went through my like suicidal phase and I went through like I I never really had like anxiety but I definitely went through like a lot of depression yeah and I I went on medicine for a while it didn't help me it just made me feel worse which I don't I don't know if everybody's experience with like I I went on Lexapro I don't know if everybody's experience is the same but I felt like a dead person which I think is the goal of that medicine and I didn't like that so I've been on so many of them, and yeah, they they all have different effects and stuff. Some of them make it worse. Some of it, you know, it's like trying to pick the favorite cocktail, you know. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about, did you do counseling at all? I personally didn't do counseling because when I was younger, like, my parents forced all of us kids to go to, like, marriage counseling and family counseling with them. Mm-hmm. So I hated it. <laughs> I did go to a doctor not a counselor but I did go to like a like a teen care doctor and uh she was really awesome she helped me through a lot of stuff I would go and talk with her like once a month or something just 
prescribed me with something that she thought would work for me. She tried a lot of new things with me other than medicine as well. So Mm -hmm. she really, I appreciate her a lot. I still go to her, (laughs) which is pretty crazy because I'm not a teenager anymore, but I just love her. So I just continue to like to get my yearly checkups with her. Mm -hmm. And she, like, I think it's really cool for her to see like who I am now. Like since my, I was a freshman in high school. Like, I've not been on any medicine or anything because I have found my own ways to deal with all of that. And Yeah, what do you do? Even, I don't really believe in medicine anymore in a sense of, like, you can find happiness in other things to help you cope with things, you know. And I, I do yoga. I meditate. Uh-huh. I eat healthy. Like, all of that stuff can help your mental health quite, like, significantly. So all right. of that stuff has worked for me. It might not work for other people, but like for me, it's just like uh, being active, working out, uh, yeah, doing yoga mm-hmm. and like being with myself, thinking like my thoughts that I need to think. And Brandon had a really good thing. He's, he was saying that, and it, I, somehow it's probably controversial, but I still agree with what it. He was just saying like, I find it hard to be sad when you're doing what you want to, like doing things you enjoy, you're eating right, you're working out, you have your people, like kind of like, I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Working out has more effect than you think. Eating the right food has an impact. Yeah. And the reason why I know that's a fact for most people is because I went through a state in my life where I wasn't doing anything that I'm doing now. And I was so depressed. Yeah. But now, even though I still struggle with like my PTSD and my panic attacks and stuff, like, I mean, it's so slim that I struggle with those things. Like I'll have them like a couple times a year compared to like every single day when I was right. in high school. So there, that's how I know that that those things help is you figuring out what you love and going to just do that. You know, like if you like for me, I love going to music festivals and as of now, like, they're all canceled, which definitely uh, was not fun to hear, you know, Mm -hmm. but I still am fine, and I'm finding other things that I love to do right now, and I'm just really diving into things that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, what would you say to the person who maybe is Lexi Jr., you know, someone (laughs) who's, uh, someone who is a little bit farther behind you, maybe they're in the middle of anxiety, in the middle of depression. I would just say, like, if there's anything in your life right now that you don't want to be doing or you, like, makes you just so depressed, get rid of it. Again, easier said than done. But if you know, like, in your head, you're like, okay, this thing is what is making me depressed. I don't need it in my life anymore. And you get that shit out of there. You're going to be better off. And or the other way around, if you know that you would love to do something, and you're like, I don't know the right time, or I don't know, like, if I can do it, or whatever, you want to do it so bad, go do it, it'll make you so much happier, if you just, like, do what you want to do, and don't do what you don't want to do, there are some things that, like, uh, let's say, like, you have a kid, or something, and you need to take care of that kid, like, and it, like, would cause you not to be able to take care of them, probably you still got to do it, but, like, there's other ways around it, you know, Mm-hmm. To just do what you love to do and don't do what you don't want to do. Well, I want to wrap up here because um, I know you kind of have to go. Uh, so we'll do our, our final five questions. What is the best thing you can do during the COVID-19 crisis? Again, just if there's something you've always wanted to do, like freaking learn a language, it's the best time to do it right now. Number two, podcast, TV show, or true crime thing that you would true recommend crime. people watch or listen to. Probably, I mean, the only way I, like, watch my true crime videos is YouTube, so. Have you seen Mindhunter? I haven't. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Well, it's, is it on, like, Netflix or something? I think it's on, uh, what was it on? HBO, I think. Oh. That these two guys, I think this is a true story, but they go and interview serial, serial killers from 60s and 70s. Yeah, something like that. But it's, like, they're FBI agents, and they are, like, just basically doing what I'm doing, but they go to the jails and meet, like, Ed Kemper and uh manson and they like talk with them and just hear about their mind and stuff and like what were they thinking up into their crimes like during the crime after the like it's nuts 
Yeah, I've definitely watched all, like, the interviews with, like, all the serial killers, mm-hmm. like, just on YouTube and stuff, so I'm sure yeah. it's kind of similar, but, yeah, yeah that sounds, I, it sounds like something I would want to do, right. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Number three, what's your favorite part about yourself? My kindness. Mm. Why? I'm, I'm always giving, I'm always loving, I'm always helping, I'm always looking out for other people. I always make sure that everybody's okay, as well as myself. I always make sure I'm okay, too. But I just, I'm a very loving and giving person. Number four, what is one of your proudest moments to date? I think my most recent one was that I was put on, um, do you know the brand? It's, it looks like Vetements, but it's, I think it's pronounced Vetmon. Yeah, yeah Vetmon, yeah. I was uh, put on their Instagram. Oh my gosh, that's dope. So I modeled like some clothes for them and then they put me on their Instagram. So that was pretty freaking awesome. Whoa, that's so cool. Last one. What do you want to be remembered for? Whatever legacy I end up having on this earth, that's what I want to be remembered for. Mm-hmm. Just my my passion for what I do and how hard I've worked to get there. Some people will remember us. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm going to make it a point for some people too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. Well, sweet. Uh, that's the final five. What I want you to do now is pick a, this is the last thing. So pick a person, shout them out. Shout out Janice from eighth grade for getting me into Spanish or teaching me about computers, whatever you want. <laughs> We're just picking a random person that you know had an impact on your life or just shout them out. So that way you can kind of share this part of the podcast with them. I want to shout out to my fashion merchandising teacher in high school. Her name is Miss Moore. She pretty much set like my eyes on a mod like a modeling career Mm -hmm. and I actually really cool I let her know that I got signed with an agency and she let me go talk to her class and then show everybody my portfolio and like the magazines I've been in she's the best well hey you've been on the classic buffalo podcast boom you're done (laughs) yay thank you I am happy that you got to be on here and talk a little bit about your modeling journey. It's just the beginning. You know, I know the coronavirus stuff's thrown a wrench into a lot of people's plans, but, you know, with your passion, your drive and support system and with Brandon and stuff, like you, you've got a really solid team built around you. And uh, you'll hear that, my thoughts in general on the outro, but, you know, just so glad you got to get on here. You're a really solid person and I can't wait to see where you um, and your family uh, go in the future. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. It was awesome talking to you. All right. Well, we'll talk soon, okay? All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Ryan from the Classic Buffalo Podcast. Wanted to take a second to talk about Anchor, how I'm actually making this podcast happen. Super happy that I'm partnering with them. So Anchor is actually the easiest way to make a podcast. I've done my research. This is basically the best way. I promise it's going to give you everything you need in one place for free, which is the best part. It's going to have tools, so you don't really need a fancy schmancy recording guy. Anchor's going to be helping you out there, and then they're going to distribute the podcast everywhere to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, everything. And then you can also make money with basically no minimum listenership, which is kind of rare. So hop on Anchor as soon as you can. Thanks. And that is the episode. Thank you so much for joining this week and listening to a little bit of a conversation between me and Lexi. If you'd like to be like Lexi, share your own story. Maybe you know somebody who would be an awesome person to be on the podcast. Please hit me up in the DMs on Instagram at Classic Buffalo. Feel free to leave a rating on wherever you're listening to this or a review. Always helps. Maybe share this podcast with a friend or say, hey, go check out episode blah, blah, blah. This is this. It's how, it's really good about body positivity anxiety depression therapy tips thoughts on counseling whatever share it with a friend always helps um so you know that this portion uh if you're new we talk about kind of debrief my thoughts on lexi my thoughts on what's going on with me uh in general this week um and so let's get into that my thoughts on lexi uh you know good vibes you know that's why i titled it that the episode is because um you know she radiates it not only in person but just uh you know talking with her and you know her and brandon 
both are really, really solid people. And I'm just so privileged to have them in my life and to just to have, you know, cross paths with them at this point. And, uh, you know, they're both just really hard workers, always trying to look on the positive side. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't listened to that episode, please, you know, now that you're done with this, um, please go check that out after this episode's over and, uh, just go take a look at, uh, Brandon's episode. So that's book 61. Go check that out. I think you'll really enjoy it. But, uh, you know, we reference a few things. So I, I just feel like for a, like I said, a full comprehensive experience, I feel like you'd really enjoy listening to what Brandon has to say. So, you know, Lexi, she, you know, we didn't get to dive fully, um, into, uh, her story as much as I might have liked, but, um, you know, she's been through a lot and damn, imagine having to have a restraining order put on somebody your freshman year of high school, you know, uh, you know, I was bullied mercilessly or maybe that's too aggressive of a statement, but I was bullied in high school. Um, and it was rough, you know, having to deal with all that stuff. I dealt with it in middle school and high school on the bus, man. That was, that was rough city, but you know, it wasn't to the point of a, you know, uh, having to get into legal things, but, you know, I just wanted to point out for those of you, uh, in Lexi's similar shoes of having to deal with an abusive home life, um, dealing with abuse from your peers, dealing with things like that. You don't have to have that be the final answer in your life. You can still overcome it. You can still, um, you can take legal action. (laughs) You know, if it gets severe enough, you can, you can power through it. Ultimately, you know, when I look at Lexi's story, I look at these people who had somewhat of a negative impact on her life and those suck, but she still found things she enjoys doing which would be modeling and singing and acting and doing all these different types of things and an entre- a budding entrepreneur that she really is. Cause I know like you heard in the episode that she wants to have a clothing line and all things like that. Right. You know, she didn't let that stuff define her. She still worked through it. Um, and you know, medication was good for her at a certain point. And, you know, like we have talked about and how I've talked about in previous episodes, you know, and uh, medication works for some people and other people it doesn't you know um that's my favorite part of this podcast is kind of explaining what other people's interaction with medication and counseling has been so you guys can get a comprehensive view on what's worked for other people Uh, because in my personal view i think medication is good for some not for others i think therapy works for most people you also do have bad experiences with counseling you know lexi really didn't try it that much but that's all good you know it's not for everybody, but I think there's some benefits to, um, to counseling for a lot of people. So, um, I personally recommend it, but, um, you know, what I referenced and I think Lexi's on the same page with this of just like when you're doing things that you enjoy, if you're into anime, are you watching anime? Are you on Reddit? Are you hanging out with people who like anime? Are you into volleyball? Are you on a volleyball team? Are you playing it? Are you watching YouTube videos with volleyball players? Like how involved in the culture of whatever you like are you? You know, are you finding friends that also like stuff that you like to do? Photography, volleyball, anime, shooting guns. Are you a Republican, a Democrat, you know, in the middle, in between? Are you this? Are you that? Do you like to knit? Do you, you know, whatever those things are. Like depression and anxiety, um, I think depression more so maybe. It's just, it's a, it's a warning sign. You know, Lexi poured herself into multiple different things and modeling is just a really cool thing and outlet for her and she enjoys it. And, you know, she's also got really good friends and a good support system. And because of that, you know, that those things, having those things in place, um, keeps things like depression and anxiety at bay. You know, when you're pursuing a passion, when you have a North star, your anxiety can, come around a little less often because you have, you know, maybe I'm not going to be there tomorrow, right? That thing you really want to do, but you know, I'll get there in a couple years or maybe five or 10 years, just because you know, you're at least trying, you're trying to learn a new skill. You're trying to, you know, will help for you in the long way or long end, you know, in the long run, you're doing something that you enjoy, whether for fun, because you just enjoy it, you know, or it's going to be building a skill that'll actually help you logistically get there. Like that's always good. And, um, you know, Lexi and like a lot of other models and actresses and actors have been hit by the COVID thing, you know, like not being able to, you know, uh, hang out with other people and network as much. And like, but again, 
trying to stay positive. What do you, what everybody can be doing something in this. And I know you could go full other side of the spectrum and saying like, oh, okay, you need to be super, super, super productive, which you don't have to. You know, I think that's kind of the trap you might fall into of like, okay, now that COVID's like, I need to be, figure my life out in the next couple of months, you know, all that kind of stuff, but you don't have to, but uh, there is something you can be doing. You know, for me personally, you know, there's things that I can't do for the next year or two until all of this stuff's, you know, blown over and you know, the economy resets and, you know, like you're in the same boat as a lot of people, but that doesn't mean you just can give up. You know, you can still, maybe you take a break from your side business and you just, you start watching movies, you start doing old hobbies that you used to do for fun. Bring those things back. If you're struggling mentally, if struggling with depression and anxiety, like me, maybe either currently or recently, you know, I took a step back and I think, for me, what I'm trying to do is take a step back from the side businesses that I'm passionate about or I'm good at or they're profitable because they'll still be there. I'm still good at those things. But if you don't have a foundation of both good relationships and your hobbies and things that you're doing, that depression and anxiety is still going to kind of be there. Like you can't, you can't just become successful and it'll go away. You know, the reason why people are happy is because they're doing things they want to be doing and they don't do something if they don't want to do it. And they have good relationships, whether that's platonically or romantically, you know, good friends, good family or whatever. And it doesn't need to be literally like, oh, you have a good relationship with your parents. It's like, well, maybe your parents are terrible and toxic. You don't need to be with them, right? It's just finding who your family, doing quotes, you know, who are those people that are your deep relationships? Who are your friends? Are you doing the hobbies and stuff you enjoy? And I think that's kind of like, well, I am sad and I'm anxious that I'm not doing things, but I'm also, I'm not reading books. I'm not watching YouTube videos. I'm not trying to network. I don't play piano anymore. I'm not being active. It's like, those are practical things that we could, as people who struggle with mental health issues, we could be trying to do a little bit better on. But also, it's important to not judge yourself. You know, as Lexi had mentioned, you know, the, one of the things for body positivity is, You're not going to be for everybody. You just aren't. And I think you get in a good place where you lean into what you are. If you're thick, if you're skinny, if you're tall, if you're short, you are what you are. And you can still change some things. But ultimately, like, I think in life, what I want this episode to call out for is you need to start standing up for yourself and say, this is me. Take it or leave it. Don't worry about changing certain things today or for this episode take that i want that to be the overall message is uh let other people (laughs) miss out on who you are because there's nothing necessarily wrong with you you're just trying to figure out just like everybody else and uh yeah just be yourself not everybody's gonna like you but that's okay you don't want that so but just don't be somebody you're not and uh you know that's cool that both lexi and brandon are people that they're just them Take it or leave it. And uh, they radiate good vibes, as the episode title says. So, yeah. Um, I'm pretty much going to end it there. I've got a couple episodes uh, in the bank. Uh, we're going to be we're towards the tail end of season one. Um, the the one-year anniversary is in two weeks, so that's kind of cool. Um, I might think about kind of capping it off with, uh, an interview with Gracie. That'd be kind of cool. Like from first episode to one of the last episodes for season one, that might be kind of cool. Cause I know a lot of stuff's changed in her life and she was on the first episode and a big reason why I kind of started doing this in the first place. So at least the podcast anyway. So yeah, um, I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm still fighting. I've uh, been still off of Instagram for the most part. I know I just came back and started posting on this stuff, but, uh, you know, I've still stayed off into Jindy. You know, I'm still trying to do some logistic stuff and just not, not worry about it, you know, I'm trying to, trying to just love myself. And again, focusing on more of my hobbies and having fun, just living my life, being Ryan. So that's my encouragement to you is hopefully you took some stuff from today's episode, something that Lexi said and it encouraged you or motivates you or make you feel a little bit less alone. And I'm sure she'd be more than willing to chat over the DMs with you. So um, until next time, it's been me, Ryan, your favorite host. Hopefully, maybe I'm in the top five. <laughs> Talk soon, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>